I'm Alicia Valentino, uh, Associate Faculty at Edmonds College in the Department of Anthropology. We started this project, this is week four of a four-week project, and we have been working to assess how intact the archaeological site is here, the Kumasaka Farmstead and Green Lake Garden Company site, which dates between about 1919 and 1968. So as part of the project, we have excavated shovel probes along a systematic grid to see what subsurface conditions are. And we really honed in on uh, three areas, one of which is where we have relocated the foundation of the 1957 Kumasaka home. So we found the, the, the bottom floor of that, which is buried very nicely under some uh, uh, rubble uh, that the students have had fun digging through. Uh, we've explored the uh, subsurface conditions near the related uh, shed and garage from that same home. And then what's really interesting is we have pinpointed uh, a buried layer that we believe to be associated with the pre-World War II uh, community center and potential outbuildings uh, associated with a community center that Shoji Kumasaka had donated for use by the Nihonjinkai, which is the Japanese association, which taught uh, Japanese language, arts, theater, judo, um, and it was really a gathering point for the North Seattle Japanese American community. The material culture that we have found is very reminiscent of material that we would find from a house, but also from the greenhouse business. So we've got a lot of glass uh, for the greenhouse, metal, ceramic pots like terracotta, you probably have those yourselves at home. We are finding things from the res residential structure like ceramics, uh, ceramic bowls, uh, little teacup handles. We're also finding personal objects so combs, uh, marbles, things like that. So this helps us put together uh, a story about the lives of those who lived and worked here. We found a lot of interesting artifacts. We found a Canadian World War I pin, um, and we did a little bit of research on that too. It turns out in Canada in World War I, only about 200 Japanese Canadians fought. And so it'd be kind of interesting if we could find someone for that kind of hard to nail down who it is, but it's interesting to think that you can find all that out with just a pin. You know when you're digging up things you find pieces of like plates and you're like, someone actually ate off of these. It's really cool to just find things that people used to have and used to use and just kind of imagine, you know, like I have plates like this at home. My mom has these in a nice china cabinet. And so it's just kind of connecting your own experience in your own life to the things that you're finding is a really good way to connect with the past but then also stay you know present in the present. This site was here until the late 40s early 50s and it's interesting to think how much has changed in just you know the last hundred years or so and it's really interesting you dig down and you know you find rusted nails and these other things and we're digging and you know you can hear the sound of the cars whirring by but mentally you're kind of in this whole different space you're kind of creating this story of well the barn was here and the house was here and so you're kind of living in uh, both realities trying to imagine what this place actually was and i think that's very fascinating and very fun uh, this field school has actually kind of ignited my career in archaeology a lot of us are looking into the cultural resource management type careers and being field techs after this it's been a true Really kind of a wonderful experience. We get to go out here and dig and do all this physical labor, but then we also get to see the, you know, reward. We're highlighting the Japanese American community in a way that I don't think has happened a lot in Seattle. And I think that's really important.